I was 19 when I knew I was going to be a minister. I studied to be a neurosurgeon. My desire was to operate heads. That was my focus. When I was about to say, wait, wait there. <laughs> wait, come. <laughs> he started flashing you people here. Now it's like I saw you some of your faces. Look at my face. He started shining. Then I noticed that there is no neurosurgeon that deals with crowd. Because in the theater, it's only a few people. But I'm seeing a crowd. Hey, I started saying, yeah, I'll be famous. I now started shining things like that. Then I will now notice I'm in a crusade. Hey, I'm saying, what is this? One day we were asked in school, I'll never forget that guy called Juma. This is the second time I'm mentioning his name. People were asked, what do you want to be? People were saying, engineer, I had put it in my... In fact, I had written it so that I will not forget neurosurgeon. When it came, he said, new nanny, when doctor, engineer, situate nurse. When it came to me, my lips lead. I said, neurosurgeon, no. Pastor, the church, the, the class laughed. I said, why? One little boy made a step. He said, you want to be a thief? I said, what do you need? And you can't blame the people because that's how we have classified ourselves. We have been classified that if you say that you're a man of God, you're just a thief. So if you are going to change that, we will need to forego a lot of things, including you giving others, to rechange and refactor, remanufacture, reset the mindset of people back to factory setting. So this generation must be reset back to believing. Then we now begin to build, build the kind of syllabus that we should have had today. So that by the time you now hear a true man of God say, we have a need of a billion, you will now begin to say, hey, what may answer? But for now, I can't say it. In two years, I took an inventory of how much you have given. Myself, I'm not talking about the church. Until I became broke. We did an analysis just on payments of people. We used 200,000 U, 100, I think, and 40,000 US dollars. Payment of staffs. You might hear that and say, wow, the man is rich. It will interest you. At that particular time, my account doesn't even have a thousand dollars. But the question is why? Because the, the, there is a huge problem. We have to reset ourselves and begin the syllabus. We are going to be the first givers. In that regard, many people, including here, have given me cars. After giving me, I will call you and I will give it back to you. So that we reset the program. So that when you see us, we walk a walk of honor. Not because the giving is wrong, but there is a factory setting that was deviated. So we must reprogram the church back. Begin by telling you that when the Holy Spirit comes, He will teach you, not He will prosper you. He will teach you. Prosperity is not a language here. Training is the language of the Holy Ghost. He begins to program you. Sit down. You will notice that before you came to the Holy Ghost, you are in a hurry. In a hurry. I want money. I want car. I want marriage. The minute you come, it's like, hey, cool down. Cool down. First thing, speed is not a language here. So Father, it is time, it is time, give me the anointing of speed. You begin to notice that prayer of speed will begin to fade off. You will no longer pray for speed. The prayer will now be that you may know him. You are now in class, sit down, desire to know Jesus, sit down, take a pen and a paper, go to this church, sit here. He can make your businesses outside the country to fade off. Just that you can arrive at a location and sit down. Then you now take a pen. This is where we say this. Say that you will notice money is not a language, an immediate language of the Holy Ghost. He will give you money at the end. Not at the beginning. At the end, you now know you have a purpose. Then you can shine a little. Then you will begin with 200,000. Check how you are using it. If you begin to have 200,000 and you begin to have many women, he will now make it 110. He will reduce the number until what you can bear. Then he will start working with you. Say, Lord, increase me. Say, no problem. We increase men by character here. Increase your character. Increase your character. Increase your ability to control yourself. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is self-control. Turn that word around. Control yourself. And unfortunately, no one can have the Holy Spirit except God in Christ be with him. The Holy Spirit can back you. He can give you a dream, but it's not in you. It's not far out that God wanted to save. Is the children of Israel. And at that particular time, the person that had aligned to that degree was Pharaoh. So God can use Pharaoh. That doesn't mean Pharaoh belongs to God. So Pharaoh cannot host the spirit, but the spirit can touch the mind of Pharaoh and give him a dream, selfish enough only for the secure breed of God. Do you understand? But that doesn't mean Pharaoh has the spirit of God in him. The Bible never said that the spirit of God was on Pharaoh. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach good news so the purpose of the Spirit of God being upon you is good news so the Spirit of God cannot be on a Muslim the Spirit of God cannot be on a Hindu the Spirit of God cannot be on an atheist 
the spirit of God can come to him because it is the spirit that knocks the door and brings you salvation but the spirit cannot live on a man that has not accepted Christ and the ways of the Lord you understand that but the spirit can come to you to be on you to be born again so he says but the helper the spirit whom the father will send in my name so there is no other name so if you are not under the name of Jesus you cannot have the Holy Spirit he is limited only to the name this father will send so if this spirit is going to come he must be sent and the only key that opens the door for the Holy Spirit to to come out are you seeing him fly for the Holy Spirit to come out of heaven that key is called Jesus Christ so unless you have Jesus Christ you cannot have the Holy Spirit but you the Holy Spirit can come to you if it is to save the people of God have you understood it but not to be in you so that one has been limited only today that have the name of the Lord he says that when the Holy Spirit comes he will not make you rich as his first agenda he won't even care which house you live in he won't care the suits you wear the car you drive that none of that matters the assignment the first expression his one of his ability is to teach and unfortunately the church of today is not exposed to the true teacher so the sign of the Holy Spirit the first sign is that he brings you into a classroom you can be in Eldoret, you can be in Moyale, you can be in where the Holy Spirit can come into your heart and then you begin to feel like living there and going to a certain place. It's not you, but because you have not been taught the beauty of it, when that thing comes to you, you ignore it. You begin to look down on the place that the Lord sent you and you do not know you are a mature person. Why would you live where you are? You are 40 or 50 or 90, why would you live there? What becomes you? And then when you now go there, you will notice that the only thing available is a classroom. That's how he works. He sits you down in a class. He, Jesus made the knowledge available and the Holy Spirit sits you down in a class that you may know him. He begins to take you through training. Success is not part of his early postures. Increase is not part of his early postures. Greatness is not part of his early postures. Money is not part of his early postures. The curriculum you study when you enter school is one plus one. Success is not one plus one. Success is in campus. He doesn't want you to be successful without understanding what is the reason for the success. So he will take you through adequate milk training before he offers you meat training. He will offer you adequate training as per teacher's classroom. But when a born again believer gets born again today, the first thing you begin to hear is a money cometh to me. You just became born again. The money you had you prostituted with it if you become born again today and i give you money what are you gonna do with the money so we first need to teach you what is money he takes you through and it's him that selects the syllabus it's him that knows you cannot force the holy spirit to teach you anything he decides how to teach you so in that training you can find that someone has been trained for eight months and then on the ninth month they prosper and then another person will be trained for 15 years it is not you can that's why the bible now comes and tells you it is not wise if you're gonna go this direction of spiritual training the first thing you need to understand it will not be wise to compare yourself among yourself you can't say but you are with this one in high school look at the way they have made it it is not wise so in case you begin to notice you have a gospel of comparison you are not walking the path of wisdom I was a millionaire in my 20s 22 I was already a millionaire I've never told you that 22 I was 15 when I became a driver 16 years I was already driving no 16 I left my father's house at 15 my brother is there he can attest went to a place called Rongai started my life there I was a matatu conductor at a young age became a matatu driver met my wife as a dog feeder the Lord took me through little trainings one time I became hey, I started going a friend of mine came and told me there is oil business oil okay okay i didn't pray about it i saw i was going to reach and then i cheated god into it i said lord if this one deal goes through your church in kenya will be like this <laughs> the church will thrive as if i'm the one that holds the finances of the church in kenya the first day i invested without asking i lost fifty-four thousand us dollars completely gone hey my family and i went back to a bed sitter and a room with us a, a, a green stove called steve if you know you know and one mattress I subjected this woman to that we began again I now learned that anointing is not expressed in foolishness 
that when the teacher comes he will not anoint you and begin service he will tell you sit down let us start the journey he taught me the journey of resources taught me the journey of marriage taught me the journey of identity gave my ministry eh? 14 years later the Lord told me it is going to be sit down my friends were prospering you need to see them when our ministry was in Nairobi and Jesus told me it is time to let go let go of the ministry how do you explain to your family you already have two cars you have a nice house and then the Lord comes and tells you I am not in this thing do you know how many people have been told I'm not in this idea but they still continue with the idea I'm not in this relationship they still continue I'm not in this business they still continue I'm not in this in this idea they still insist now at that particular point cast is the man heaven considers you have having put trust in yourself trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding so when your understanding steps in God steps out Ooh, I repeat again when your understanding steps in God if everything to you must make sense in the brain God walks out he leaves you with your brain it is many years later that you begin to notice you're making obvious family mistakes obvious ministry mistakes obvious idea mistakes then you begin to trust in the name of the Lord then you will begin to recall you you begin to tell you this is how you failed this is how you he will take you in a class no hurry arrange this one arrange this one arrange this one remove this one arrange this one I don't like this one remove it but who told you when you come to God everything is yes I know the scripture you're looking for his promises are underline the word is make sure they are his promises he didn't tell you promises are yes only his